the coming rapture, biblical or non-biblical? Why so many Christians are being deceived with a rapture lie, does the rapture align with biblical scripture? No, it doesn't. And in this video, I will show you why not. All verses being used are King James Version. Most people who believe the pre-tribulation rapture use 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. It says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So let's go a couple verses above that to 1 Thessalonians 4, 15. For we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So by those two verses, we know that this is talking about the day of the Lord. Now let's read some more to show you that we will not go to meet the Lord until after the tribulation. Let's read 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you know who the man of sin or son of perdition is? This is the Antichrist, Satan himself. Next, we are going to Revelation 6, verses 16 through 17. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Now the verses in the Revelation 6 above this are the six seals being opened. So now we have read that the great day of wrath has come. Let's read Revelation 7, 1 through 8. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascend, ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Assir were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephthalim were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Okay, so that right there on them eight verses tells us that the great day of wrath has begun and now all these have been sealed. Remember, chapter 7 starts, and after these things I saw... So this is happening after the great day of the Lord. He has sealed these people in these last eight verses. Let's go to verses 9 through 12. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with right robes and psalms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, 
blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so now that we see that God has set up his throne and multitudes of people have been washed clean and now have their white robes. So who are these people? This has happened after the great day of wrath. Let's read 13 through 17. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Okay, wait. Revelation 6 said, We was at the great day of wrath. Most people tell you that God's people won't be here, that they are already raptured up. But that's not what this is telling us. So if the tribulation is not for us and only for the bad, then why does this say that they just came out of great tribulation? We can read that again. Chapter 7, verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes white. Okay? They are washed. They are clean. Let's check some more. We're going to go to Revelation 13. Verses 4 and 7. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Okay, this is talking about the beast. Most people, if they've ever read Revelation, they've at least heard this sometime or another in their life. The beast, the Antichrist. Okay, this is saying that he has come and he is making war with the saints. So if we are not here for him to make war with, then how how is this here? If we have done been taken out. Okay, let's go to Revelation 20 verse 4. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, this is talking about the judgment now. So the throne's there and all these people are standing there in front of it and we're going through the judgment. We all know that it all has to be done with before we go before the judgment. And it's talking about the souls there in front of them. The ones that were beheaded for Jesus, for the word of God. The ones that had not worshipped the beast, his image, or had not taken his mark. So that tells you that there had to be people still here that had to refuse to take this. That were killed because they would not take this. Let's go to Matthew 24, verses 29 and 30. 24, 29 first. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Okay, it tells us immediately after the tribulation you will see the Son of Man coming. Not before. So this is telling you we have not been pulled out. We have not seen the Son of Man because we're going through the tribulation. We have to go through the tribulation. Then immediately after we will see this. We're going to go to Matthew 13, verses 37 43. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. 
but the tares of the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteousness shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. This parable is telling you about a wheat and the tires. Your wheat and your tires, they grow together. They don't go in there to start with and get rid of all this. They have to let the wheat grow. But when it comes time to harvest, they separate the wheat from the tires. The wheat is the good. The tires are the bad. This even tells you the enemy that sowed them is the devil and the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. So they're going to gather us all together at the same time. We're all going to be here at the same time. If you're still naturally living and you haven't already had something that, that has taken you away, you're still going to be here. And God, when he comes back, he is going to separate us from each other. He's going to send the good to heaven and he's going to send the bad to where they're supposed to be. People, you have a choice right now that you have to make. I don't want you to be sitting here and waiting to be caught up into the sky and be caught blindsided by the things in this world that are coming. The Antichrist is going to be here. It's going to be a bad time. You have to be strong in your faith. You have to stand with God. You have to let God lead you because if you're weak, if you don't know for sure what all is going to happen and then this starts happening as bad as it's going to be, you could possibly throw your faith to the side and say, what's happened? God has forsaken me. Because my church, all these people, they told me this wasn't going to happen. That if I was a child of God, that I was going to be called up already, that I wouldn't be going through this. But you are going to be a child of God and still be here. But you don't want to be blindsided by this. You want to know what is happening. This is the exact reason that God sent all these people before us. Had all of this written so you can read it and study it and learn it. The Bible says to study to show thyself approved. You have to read this. You have to study this. Do not listen to one man to what they're telling you. Don't listen to just what I'm telling you. Study this. Line the scriptures up. See if what they're saying is true or not. Do not take one verse in this book out of any chapter and think that is exactly what it means. Because there can be more stuff to tell you exactly at what time and what place this is going to take place. All these scriptures are using the First Thessalonians 4.17 where it says we will be caught up into the air. Yes, it says that. But if you go ahead and you read Revelation 6 and Revelation 7 and 13 and 20 and come back to Matthew 24 and Matthew 13 and you put all of this together and you say this all at one time, you will see that the timeline is after the tribulation, after the great day of wrath. We're all going to be here and we're going to be separated then. We are going through this tribulation, people. I'm sorry to have to tell you that. I know a lot of people want the easy way out. They just want to be called out before any of the trouble starts. But that is not what this is about. We're going to be tested. You're going to see if you will stand for God in the worst of the worst. I want you to just go and study this stuff right here. I hope this has been a blessing to you. If you like this video, hit that thumbs button down below. Give me a thumbs up. I hope you will subscribe and continue to learn more about the Bible with us. Thank you and God bless.